Yes, guys, and uh, welcome to another video uh, for RT Handouts. Today, we're going to check out the cool little device, the Zega Main Gear. Um, these are custom built. You can see this one I've just had made, um, which is the Sonic themed uh, Zega Main Gear Plus. Um, this is the second version in the generation of these devices. I did review one uh, not long ago, uh, the Gen 1 version, um, but this one has had a few upgrades along the way. Um, I just want to thank <coughs> John um, from uh, ZUK, Zega Arcade UK, uh, for getting this out to me uh, and uh, making my own custom themed uh, Zega Main Gear Plus. Uh, so today we're going to check out uh, exactly what this is, what it can do uh, and just talk about, um, you know, the specs of the device. Uh, you can see here, um, you get, you actually get this in the box as well. Uh, some merchandise, Zega main gear, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you can, you, <coughs> you know, it resembles the uh, Sega game gear. Uh, this is actually the Sega Game Gear Micro, um, great collectors, these little devices. Uh, so let's check the actual device out. Uh, we won't do unboxing today. Um, we're just gonna check out the actual device. Let's put this aside. So I've loaded up <coughs> and booted the actual device here. You can see the screen on this device uh, from the Gen 1 series, I believe has been upgraded. Uh, this particular screen um, is a composite screen. I know that John has been doing some testing recently uh, to improve the screen. So I have noticed from my uh, first version, Gen 1, uh, Zega Mame Gear, that the screen is actually uh, improved. Uh, uh, the colors are more vibrant, uh, viewing angles are better. Uh, so I'm pretty, pretty impressed with the device. Uh, let's take a look around the outside of the device. You all guys know this classic shell, uh, which is a Sega Game Gear. Um, this particular one, like I say, has been customized for my own personal needs, um, which I had two extra buttons fitted here, um, and they work, and they are very comfortable. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, um, they look uncomfortable, but actually they are perfectly fine. You see they work, that's scrolling the menu right there. Um, so yes, I really like uh, this setup because it allows me to play um, higher spec games, um, not just stuck to two button games. I can actually play some arcade games and so on. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So a quick look around the device and we'll talk about the specs. Uh, so it's a 320 by 240 screen, um, LCD screen. This particular one is a composite screen. Um, you also have uh, the older versions, which is uh, using a serial connection. Um, so that's that. Uh, I know John has also upgraded to type C um, with safe shutdown, uh, all integrated into one nice board there. You can see, uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it has digital audio. Um, that's something integrated digital audio um, circuit now. So that's been integrated into there as well. Um, here is your uh, volume up and down, which is cool to have, just like the original. Uh, the D-pad is very good. I, I did actually test a few games using the D-pad and I'm happy with the D-pad. Uh, it is very good, it's firm and it's responsive. Uh, you got your speaker right there. Uh, like I say, this is a custom build. So uh, these shells have to be specially made and painted uh, to order. So I will put all the links in the description of the video so you guys can check out where to get the shells and where to actually order one of these um, so you can uh, have your very own uh, personal Sega MAME gear. 
Um, so these are the strap loopholes down here. You can see I've actually put a lanyard, the original Sega Game Gear lanyard, which I had lying around. Uh, so I made use of that. Uh, these buttons are actually painted, uh, which are pretty cool. Um, don't know if you can see there. I really like them, the way they've made these buttons. Uh, painted from the inside, same with the case, so it'll never wear the paint off. And the lovely custom design around here, they've done a great job, the case maker. I will link the case maker as well in the description so you can check it all out. Uh, nothing on the side here apart from this particular button which uh, acts as a second button for the unit which helps exit uh, a game when you're actually uh, playing in-game. You simply press this or say that you're in a uh, arcade game like MAME, you simply press this to add credits, which I found very cool uh, and a bonus. Um, the back of the device, uh, so this is just a empty slot like the original. Uh, you can't actually put a cartridge in there. Uh, it has no connection, but um, what John is working on, and he should have them soon, is uh, something called the expansion board, uh, which just sits in there, it screws into here. And what it allows you to do is it connects to the, uh, the pins on the uh, Raspberry Pi. Of course, this is powered by either a Raspberry Pi 3B, uh, Raspberry Pi 0, Raspberry Pi 0 2, um, and you can even go up to uh, CM4 power uh, should you need to. This particular one, guys, is uh, powered by a Raspberry Pi 0 2, uh, which I find um, purely for battery life. Um, the Pi Zeros are quite cool uh, for battery life, and uh, the new Zero 2 has got that added benefit of that extra power over the original Zero, um, so you can go up and play uh, your know, games like Super NES, Mega Drive, uh, with these uh, and no stutter. Um, the software is still in optimization, uh, optimization, so I know John is still working hard on the software to optimize it, since there's no official release of RetroPie uh, out there yet. As soon as that drops, uh, you know, the OS will get a lot more opti optimized straight away. Anyway, let's go back to what we were talking about was the expansion board, which is going to allow you to add a micro SD card right here on the top and a USB port. Uh, like, say, if you want to plug in a keyboard or a joystick or even just copy your games onto a, a st external storage via USB. Um, well, RetroPie, you can do all that. Uh, no need to open the device anymore because the memory card will be sitting right here. Uh, at the moment, I've just bought this, uh, well, I had this lying around, uh, a, a spare cartridge. Uh, you can just put, pop them in simply just to cover the gap like that. So that's what I've done until uh, I get my expansion board. I will be doing another video on that board as a two when I get it. Uh, so looking around the device, let's have a look what's under these. So you remember uh, the Sega Game Gear used to take your uh, cell batteries. You'd have to buy so many of them or rechargeables. So now um, I believe this is a 2000 milliamp uh, battery uh, and you have one I had uh, got one on either side so I'm going to get some really good battery light out of this unit using the two batteries uh, so I'm happy with that it's optional uh, at point of uh, sale you can either have one fitted or you can have two you must uh, uh, note that how many you actually want uh, when you're buying the device so that's more or less the back, guys. You know it's powered by a Pi Zero 2 now, which I've just told you. Uh, on this side, we don't have anything. Uh, let's have a look at the top. So this is just a cover uh, right here, uh, which you get this port cover, and I've simply stuck it down 
uh, to cover that hole, but you could actually connect a USB right there as well, um, which I've seen uh, in other videos, which people have done. Uh, you have your power button here. And like I said, it's been upgraded to type C on this uh, Zega Mame Gear Plus. Uh, the older version was just the Zega Mame Gear. Uh, this is the actual plus version. So it has one circuit with type C and save shutdown now. Uh, so you simply power it off. You can see it's powering off and it's off. When you want to power it on, you simply power it back up, uh, which I think, you know, really is good. Uh, no need to go into menu and start typing in uh, uh, quit to shut down. Uh, sometimes that could take a while. It's pretty simple, just on and off. That's um, a great addition to this device. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the external part of the device. Uh, let's talk about the actual internals quickly. Uh, so basically, uh, what you're looking at is uh, what's new in the Zega main gear is USB-C charging. Uh, you got integrated digital audio circuit. Uh, you have an integrated lithium charger and battery level indicator, which shows you your battery level. Uh, and of course you got the safe shutdown and power so this particular model is the Zega main gear plus as i mentioned uh, it's powered by a pi zero two uh, so what's included you get the main board uh, with a 320 by 240 3.2 inch spi lcd screen uh, which is pre-assembled um, you get the uh, audio board with integrated digital audio pre-assembled uh, and you get the uh, ZMG Plus power board pre-assembled. Uh, that's what you actually get in the kit. Um, so like I say, it's compatible with a Raspberry Pi uh, 3A Plus, Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero 2, uh, and um, you can actually get another board which allows you uh, for CM4 power. So if you feel you want to go up higher and use CM4 in there, you can buy the particular CM board. Now, I know John is working on um, a expansion adapter that actually fits on the back of this main board of the main uh, Zega Main Plus board, and it allows you to actually uh, plug in a CM4 module. So you guys who have got older devices, the Zega Mame Gear, you can actually expand and uh, add the adapter, which then will allow you to add the uh, uh, CM4 module. And I think that's a, a cool device. I may consider doing it on this one later down the line when I feel uh, Pi Zero Two is just not powerful enough. Um, I could simply buy the adapter, uh, just snap the adapter on, put on my CM4 module and away I go. That's the beauty of these devices. They're self upgradable um, and John really has done an amazing job uh, on these units uh, and getting them out to the guys. So that's that guys. Um, let's take a look at the actual UI now. So uh, this is John's own custom. Uh, UI which uh, he's done a, a, a smashing job he installs a few themes um, I particularly like this theme that he's installed so let's go ahead you got the Atari Lynx um, right there you got the classic Sega Game Gear um, you simply press this button and you go in and choose your game uh, we will check out a game or two in a bit I uh, just want to go through the menu so you got Game Boy, you got a uh, Game Boy Color, you got uh, your Sega Master System, you got your Sega Mega Drive, um, you also got Neo Geo, uh, your Nintendo NES. Um, that's for options where you can simply go in and uh, configure the options. So this is using RetroPie guys, as you all know. Uh, not an official build, uh, this is, a, I believe it's a, um, a nightly build, 
uh, currently being made um, and hopefully there will go official soon which will see a lot better performance for the device it's not too bad at all right now but uh, I know it can do better because uh, the Pi Zero 2 is a very capable device as you all know um, so yeah so we have some SG-1000 which is cool um, you have some Super NES uh, and you have some arcade games in there uh, if you guys are into the old arcade main games uh, basically this thing uh, the Pi Zero 2 can play anything up to I would say uh, some PSP 2D games uh, that's as far as you can probably push it I wouldn't say GameCube um, you'll be really pushing for GameCube but anything else guys under that the Pi Zero 2 is more than an, enough capable um, to power the device so that's all the systems I have on this particular device now for transferring games we're going to just talk quickly about transferring games so you could use expansion board I mentioned earlier which will be available in about two weeks I've been told by John um, and you can simply use a USB to add games or the micro SD card uh, and copy over your games so that's one option Another option is uh, you connect via Firezilla FTP, um, you know, wirelessly, and you can actually uh, send the games wirelessly to the device. I have used that option in the past on my first one, uh, which I found uh, pretty good to actually do, but I found that, um, you know, the transfer rate is a bit slow over the uh, air. So, um, you know, the expansion board will be a godsend for this device uh, you'll get a lot faster transfer times uh, so guys let's just take a look at uh, some games uh, just very quickly so uh, let's try the old game gear and see what we can play you can actually fast scroll as well if you hold it down i believe there you go You got some classics here just going through some of the games here let's try the old sonic the hedgehog what other better game to try is the old classic sonic it's the original uh, sega game gear version Uh, you can control the volume here if you find it too loud, obviously. Let's put it down a bit. There you go. Sonic and Tails. Uh, this particular one is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Like I say, guys, uh, the software is not fully optimized. You can see the colors are vibrant on this screen being the newer screen which I found uh, a big upgrade uh, to the actual first one I had um, so I'm pretty impressed with uh, you know the screen d-pad feels great the buttons feel great uh, I'm really happy with that you got your uh, start button here right there guys Yeah, so like I was saying earlier, I think to exit, you can actually press this one and this one together. So you hold this, you hold, press that one and it will exit. So this acts as a um, exit button um, in RetroPie. So to go back, you just simply, oh, sorry, it's this one's back and that one actually goes back in. Not an issue. We can simply just uh, press start and this button again to exit out. There you go. So that was some Sega Game Gear, guys. Um, let's try some arcade games uh, just to give you guys, uh, you know, a feel of... Um, I am going to install some higher-end games on here and see what it can really do. Uh, but I'm waiting for a bit of optimization 
um, with the official release of Retro 5 before I start doing that. Um, but yeah, I was actually playing Frogger the other day, which I um, really like uh, back in my childhood games. But let's try Pac-Man because uh, that's also a classic I love. So these are uh, actual main games that you're playing here, uh, arcade games. So that's Pac-Man loaded up. To drop a credit in, like I say, I think you just press this button on the side. There you go. And then you simply hit the start button. How cool is that, guys? I'm pretty sure you guys remember playing this down your local chippy back in the days. Putting in them uh, coins. I certainly do. Absolutely love this game. Uh, so yeah, the D-pad I find, like I say, is extremely responsive over the first gen one. Uh, I find that John has done an amazing job on the device uh, over the original. And he's only getting better and better as he uh, starts integrating most the uh, circuitry onto uh, single boards. Uh, and integrating like power and uh, sound all into one module, you know, to make ease of use, including the expansion board for CM4. Uh, he's dropping all that onto one board, and I believe it's going to have USB and SD uh, uh, support inside all on one board, uh, which is pretty cool. So guys, that's Pac-Man. Simply press that button and that button to exit out. So convenient that is. Uh, good job there, John. Um, you got the start button here and you can see you have a few options to choose from. Um, you simply choose whatever and press start again to exit out. Um, what else do we have on here? So guys, I will link everything about this device um, in the video so don't worry about that um, I will also uh, link the specs uh, of the device and uh, as usual any other links that um, you know you guys need uh, let's try some last uh, test of some Mega Drive games guys so here we go I do like Afterburner so let's try Afterburner I was actually thinking of customizing this Sega logo and putting some nice blue LED lights underneath it. Um, you can actually uh, connect it to the uh, uh, board itself. Uh, so that's just something uh, for my personalization, you know, uh, for the device. I think it'd look cool. So here we go, Let's start off after where. That's as high as the volume go, which I find it's uh, more than adequate, guys. I find diagonals uh, using this D-pad are a lot better also uh, from the first gen device. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Of course, I would have loved that analog stick here, but it just won't be a game gear, would it? With an analog stick. But I don't know, I guess you could move the speaker from here to here somehow and integrate an analog stick here. Possible, very possible, but that's time and money. So that's Afterburner, guys. Uh, let's get out of that. So there you have it guys, that's basically the Zame, Zega Mame Gear Plus, uh, this particular one, which is uh, powered by Raspberry Pi 2 guys. Um, and uh, like I say, you can use the old original Pi Zero, uh, you're going to get better battery life uh, uh, with the Pi Zero as 
compared to a, a CM4 device. So the choice is entirely yours. I personally went for a Pi Zero 2. I think it fits the bill perfectly for a device like this. Um, you know, but I will be re doing more videos on this soon, guys. Um, I want to show you guys the expansion board as soon as I get one. Um, so, uh, you know, that's uh, uh, going to be a, a godsend for transferring games to the device. Um, this comes in many shells. You actually choose your shell you want um, online. And, uh, you know, anything is possible, guys. You can even design your own shell, which I thought was really cool. Uh, I'm uh, thinking of actually making another one. Uh, we'll see a CM4 version, but we shall see about that. Uh, I'm going to leave it with you guys. This is the Zega Main Gear Plus, um, powered by Pi Zero 2. Um, let me know, guys, in the comments what you think about the device. Uh, have you got one? Are you getting one? Uh, you know, would you like one? I'm there to answer your questions, so any questions, guys, uh, you know, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, of course, um, and we shall see you soon.